Hi, welcome to this short video. Uh, this is a bit of a different one in actual fact, and I'm going to be taking a bit of a risk with this one because uh, it's not exactly my normal subject, but it is about radio. Um, so anyway, sorry for not posting very many videos recently. It's summer, and as you can probably imagine, I've been out in the motorhome doing all sorts of other stuff, as well as playing radio. I just really haven't had the um, the time to film them and do all the editing. It does take a lot of time. But anyway, this video is, as I say, a little bit contentious, maybe, especially to the usual crowd that watch my videos. But please stick with it. You'll probably see what the, uh, what the underlying tone is all about. So anyway, um, this weekend I was at a festival, Van Life Festival. And whilst walking around, I noticed that a hell of a lot of vans had Springer aerials. Now, if you don't know what a Springer aerial is, literally, it's just a, a very, very straight whip with a bit of a coil at the bottom. Nothing fancy, that's that's what it is. Um, and for those of you that do know what I'm on about, you'll know that it's used for CB. Okay, so if you're still watching, <laughs> if you haven't tuned out in disgust of the guy that talks all about amateur radio and HF and using pan adapters and stuff like that is all of a sudden talking about CB so if you haven't automatically switched off and unsubscribed then thanks very much so yeah um, in the motorhome um, I've had a Springer on the motorhome for quite a while I haven't used it to transmit yet I have got a Yaesu 857 and that Yaesu 857 is opened up to other frequencies what we call wide banding now, I won't get into the legalities or the rights and wrongs about using a, a non-type approved radio for CB, okay? Um, however, uh, as I say, I could have used it, I just haven't. Now then, the reason why I'm telling you this is because when we get onto the radio that I've bought, you may instantly say, wow, Mike, what have you bought that for? That's a load of rubbish. Now, I don't know whether it is a load of rubbish or not, to be honest. I bought it because it really fits into the van well. And I think you'll agree with me on that. However, I may have made a mistake and I may have bought a radio that literally there's less people on it than there are on two meters. In which case I've just got another radio in the van that nobody's there. But anyway, um, the, the, other, the other audience I think for this video, having talked to quite a few people on the weekend about radio, is the van lifer. The people out there that want to talk to other van lifers um, and maybe other motorhomers and campers and also the 4x4 crowd as well, they tend to use CB quite a lot. So if you're one of those, then this could be an interesting video for you. So anyway, um, yeah, let's jump straight in for those of you that are still there. Let's jump in and have a look at the radio that I've bought. And then uh, I've got some photos of me actually installing the radio. And I'll talk you through what I'm doing, uh, just so that you can see how easy it is. So this is the radio I bought. It's a Thunderpole T3000. And as I say, there was a really good reason for buying this particular radio. I got it from Amazon, 110 quid nearly. And this is the Springer antenna on the van that I was telling you about. And you'll see there on bootlip mounts on the tops of the doors. And this is the Diamond Super Gainer SG7900 for the 2 meter and 70 cents rig. And the rig that I've got in the van for 2 and 70 is the Yaesu FTM400 which is a great face-off type rig. You don't have to have a big radio set on your dashboard. This is where I'm planning on mounting the radio, in that gap underneath the uh, the stereo. It's a standard DIN-sized radio, which means it will actually fit in there perfectly. So I start off by taking out the, uh, the radio and the spacer underneath, and I thread through the lid off a bit of um, trunking, uh, just to find a route behind the dash down to where the aerial comes in. The, the aerial is already cabled with a PL259 plug on it, so I need to join it. And this is the trunking coming out uh, in the footwell. So the plan is I'll have a patch lead coming out of the back of the CB with um, a, a coupler that I can then plug the, um, the existing cable into. So here what you can see is the cable attached to the trunking, which I'll then draw through the back of the, uh, the dashboard so there's no fiddling around trying to thread it through. What I did then was bare the positive and negative wires that existed already 
and tapped into them. So literally just scraped back a bit of the insulation, twisted the, uh, the new cables onto them, and then got the soldering iron out and made it permanent. And then after I'd made it permanent, I then went on to put heat shrink and electrical tape. So here you can see the DIN caddy is in place and the wires are just hanging out ready for the radio to fit. So what you can see here is the radio connected to the antenna cable and the power lead. And you can see the amazing size of this little CB. There's no depth to it. It's probably four or five inches deep. That's it. And as I say, it's standard uh, single DIN size, which means it will fit into the gap of any uh, standard DIN size stereo. It's worth adding at this point that you don't need to fit it like this. It does come with brackets, so you can actually fit it like a standard radio. So I'd already connected the PL259 plug on this end and left the other end without the plug on. So what I need to do now is fix the PL259 on the other end of the cable so that I can connect it using a barrel connector onto my uh, existing coax feeder coming from the Springer antenna. So I've got the soldering iron out and this is me in the van with no vice and all that kind of stuff just trying to solder the PL259 onto the coax. For those of you that are no good at soldering and don't know anything about this kind of stuff, you can buy all of this stuff off eBay. Typically, these type of antennas come with the cables. It's only because I want to use that mount for other purposes as well as CB that I'm doing it this way. But for a standard install, you would just have a coax cable coming from the antenna that you'd plug straight into the back of the CB. With these type of antennas as well, they're already pre-tuned. There's no messing around trying to tune them to the radio. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry. Okay, so this is the radio in situ. And how neat does that look? It looks part of the dash. Now, obviously, this is it switched off. So take a look at this now with it switched on. That looks really good, doesn't it? And you can change the colour of the uh, the LCD readout. So you've got about seven different colours, green, red, blue, purple, yellow, uh, grey. But I particularly like this colour. It kind of fits in with, uh, with the rest of the dash. You'll see I haven't found anywhere to mount the microphone yet, but that doesn't really matter. Now, this is never meant to be an instructional video or an unboxing video. It was just really a video to, number one, introduce you to the fact that I've now got a CB in the van and why I've done it, and just to show you how neat a job you can do if you're prepared to maybe compromise on the actual radio or even the functionality of the radio. It's yet to be seen whether I've made a good decision or bad decision. If you've got any thoughts on this, please leave your comments down below. Uh, I'm very, very, very new to CB. The last time I touched a CB, I was about 15. So uh, yeah, it's all new to me. But uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Obviously, bear in mind what I said about the reason why I haven't gone for an SSB radio, um, because I can do that in other ways. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, please, as we all say, go ahead and click the like button. It does really help the analytics. And if you like watching videos like this, then go ahead and subscribe. Until next time, you take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.